Hello, and welcome to the Story Nook. Go ahead and grab your tea, your coffee, your hot cocoa, your water, whatever it is you want to drink today. And we are going to be reading some wholesome stories. Our first wholesome story comes from user LadyDef1138. Mr. Rogers meant so much to me as a kid. So I might, I know this might be something commonly noted, but I've never gotten to share this before. I didn't watch TV much as a kid, but Mr. Rogers was my favorite. My mom, my mother always found him a little creepy, but she let my brothers and I watch it anyway. We didn't always have TV, so I never got to see the final episode until years later, long after I had moved out. I was going through a lot with PTSD and depression, and I wasn't feeling myself at all. My mother pulled me aside one day and said she had something to show me. Without another word, she pulled up the final episode on YouTube. I didn't think I could properly convey my feelings through words, but I definitely cried. I exploded with mixed emotions that I don't that I didn't know how to express. Somehow my mom understood through though, to this day, when I need to pick me up or a good cry, I watched the clip of his last goodbye on the show. Which is beautiful. Mr. Rogers was a beautiful show. I sadly did not watch it a lot as a kid. I guess like I might not have been up during the time it was on PBS and all that, but it, it was certainly a beautiful show from what I saw of it. And, and now that I've read this, I had marked it as I hadn't read it in the thread where I keep all my Reddit stories. And I'm thinking I did read this in a previous episode, and I just forgot to mark that I had read it. Which is fine. And, you know, you get to hear a story twice. So, yay. So we're going to go on to our next story, which is by... Lined up like Hubane. My homeroom teacher always keeps snacks and always cares about our mental health, which is a fantastic title, and I'm excited to read this. Ahead of time, sorry for the long story, but I need to shout out my teacher, Mr. Triffle. He's amazing. Since the beginning of the year, my teacher has always had snacks in his room, and he always gave the plan answer. I know our school lunches suck, as a reason why. But I asked him when I stayed after class to talk to him about some schoolwork, and he said he knows a lot of families don't have the money for food nowadays due to COVID and home issues, and that's why he goes out of his way to keep snacks in his room. Several times we have the kids that just take the food without needing it, but my class, the last hour of the day, always tries to bring snacks in to help. He always checks up on us. If he notices change in our behavior, he talks to us one-on-one -on -one or knows that something to do with the topic we are discussing bothers you. He lets you leave the classroom to be on your own. And he always keeps water and stress balls in his room for those who have panic or anxiety attacks regularly, which is one thing that helped me a lot for this year. Again, sorry for the long post, but Mr. Triffle needs to be noticed for his amazing caring skills for kids. He gets paid to see. And that is absolutely adorably sweet. A lot of teachers, uh, especially like some of the ones I've had growing up, they do not really care about you, it seems. They're just there for a paycheck. And then you have, like, these awesome teachers, like Mr. Triffle, who are actually there to care, who actually love you, and want to see you strive and go places, and that makes me so happy. And take a deep breath before I get too emotional with myself and cry throughout this whole entire episode. We have not even made it to, like, eight minutes yet, though. Our next story is from Find... Uh, A B Hair Hawk Light. I might be pronouncing your name wrong, but the A B messed with me. Anniversary surprise. My parents went to a new restaurant for their 41st wedding anniversary, and they happily told the host that it was their 
41st anniversary. They had a nice meal. The couple who had been standing behind them at the host stand left first and stopped by to wish them a happy anniversary and congratulations on making 41 years. My parents asked for the bill. The server came and told them the couple who had just paid for their who had just left, paid for their meal in full, including tip. Which, I think it's super sweet when uh, people, you're just like, oh, you're celebrating 41 years of anniversary. That's so sweet. And then, like, somebody else will, even, like, just putting down, like, a little bit of money on the bill is nice. But to go ahead and cover the bill, or what I'm presuming is probably a really nice meal, which can cost a lot. I've been with my fiance for seven years now. This is the start of our seventh year together. And it, I, I love him. I can't imagine anyone else by my side in a romantic partner kind of way. So it, it means a lot. So yeah, that, that's a thing. And we're going to go ahead and read our next story, which is really short, but it's adorable. It's by user Nathan Hausch Nietzsche. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's titled Dogs Are the Best. My dog just crawled up onto the couch and cuddled with me. And that is super sweet. Like, it's a very, very sweet story. <laughs> is legit just one sentence long but sometimes what you need is just that one sentence long story to just be oh so happy and that that makes me happy and i'm sure it makes the rest of us all happy so congestion we're going to read this next story, which is titled, Little Kids Are So Wholesome and Innocent. Today, me and my little brother went to the dark dog park today. Not the dog park. I'm still thinking about dogs. They went to the park. While we were there, we f he found a leaf. He said, on the outside, it's ugly, but on the inside, it's pretty. Which I think is kind of adorable for a kid to say. Kids can often say things that are just like, ah, gut punch. And they don't mean to gut punch you, but they do. So, we are going to go on to our next and probably our last story, as this one's a little bit longer than our last one we read. And this will be our last one for the episode, and we'll wrap it up, and I will see you all next time. So, our next post is by Leading Blind, Brotherly, and it's titled Brotherly Love. My brother and I rarely ever got along growing up, very rarely, and even as adults, we're pretty strained. We love each other, but we're just not similar enough for getting along on long-term visits. But there are three very wholesome things my brother was awesome about. One, he used to forbid me from entering his room under any circumstances. But one evening, he let me go sit on his floor, put headphones on me, played Paradise City because he knew I loved that song, and used the very volume-canceling headphones to secretly make me a special treat of Kool-Aid slushy. Two, on one particularly stormy night, when I was conscious of a tornado warning for the first time ever in my life existing in our northeast area, he came out to find me utterly unable to sleep in the dead of night, staring at the weather report in the corner of our TV screen. Realizing I was terrified of the thunder, he carried out his massive fleece blanket and specialty pillow. Both of these were his prized Dallas Cowboys memorabilia. He had me lie down on the couch, lie me down on the pillow and tucked me snugly into his blanket telling me I could sleep there all night. Two. Well, this is third, but they marked it as two. Much lesser, and he was annoyed when he realized what that weekend was, but he brought me to see the Titanic in the movie theater for the first time since I hadn't seen it yet on Valentine's Day weekend. 
Yeah, he didn't realize that until we were halfway there, but he didn't turn the car around. There are a few other things, but these were gems in a life a little more bit volatile. And that is super adorable and sweet that your brother would do those things for you. Because, like, you know, sometimes it's just, like, the little things that proves that somebody absolutely loves and cares for you. And you can feel those little things. And that's super nice and sweet. And we're going to end this episode here. So I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed whatever art that I was making that I put this video to. I hope you all stay safe, happy, healthy, and have a great and wonderful week. And I will be back next week on the podcast uh, with new content. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I'm not sure what my schedule on there is at the moment, but it tends to be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so it could be up on any of those days. But stay healthy, stay hydrated. Bye-bye!